This video is going to focus on a website called quizzes.com. And quizzes is a wonderful, very fun, and engaging activity that you can do with your students. It's basically a way to do educational quiz games, kind of like Classroom Jeopardy or other similar game shows that can be educational. Now, beyond being an educational game, quizzes is also an excellent way to do formative assessment with your students. You can use quizzes to find out exactly what your students know and don't know about a specific topic and what their strengths and weaknesses are and what they might need to work on and change. It's similar in a lot of ways to another website that's very popular right now called Kahoot. And Kahoot is actually quite a bit more popular right now and more famous and it's a really wonderful tool, very fun and educational for your students. But quizzes is similar but yet it has a little bit different take on it. For some teachers, quizzes will be a much better fit for what you're looking for. For other teachers, Kahoot is going to be a better fit. And it may depend on the kind of activity or the kind of assessment you would like to do. So before we learn how to use quizzes, let me give you a quick demo of what the experience is like for the teacher to administer a quizzes game show and also for the students as they experience the game. So first thing, the teacher needs to go into their account and select the particular quiz they would like to use. We'll learn how to do this in detail a little bit later on. And then as it says here, ask your students to open this website, join.quizzes.com, and they can open that on any device that has a web browser. They could go to that address on their smartphones. And it doesn't matter if it's a Windows phone, an iPhone, an Android device, it doesn't matter. As long as they can go to this address in a web browser on the device, it'll work with quizzes. You could use iPads, you could use Android tablets, or laptops or desktops. You could take your students to the computer lab if you want and have them go to this URL. Once they get there, it'll ask for a code and this is the code for this particular activity that the students will need to put in. In order to help you see what the experience is like for students, I'm showing my smartphone here in the corner. So on my smartphone, I just went to this address in Safari in this case, but whatever your web browser is, it should work. I went there. Now I need to type in my five digit code that you can see here at the top. Now tap proceed. And then the students just need to tap where it says enter your name and they put their name in and then tap join game. As soon as they join the game, notice that they're added, and then the student is given a random avatar that represents that student. And so it's kind of fun. Notice here it counts the number of students that have been added to the quiz activity or the game. For this example, there's just going to be the one. But you'll be able to watch as this goes up as your students are added to the game. When you're ready, you can just click Start Game. You get a countdown and so do the students on their devices. And then on the student devices, the question appears. On the screen at the front of the room, there's nothing for the students to really look at at this point. They're supposed to look at their own device screens. So what animal is this? Well, I can't quite see the animal. So I'm going to tap where it says click to hide text. And then I'll pick mono, which means monkey in Spanish. And then the next question comes up. What animal is this? Okay, that looks like a B. I tapped the wrong answer, so it tells me that I got the wrong answer and it says what the right answer was. What animal is this? I think it's that right there. And so the students can just continue to work through these questions. Now one of the differences between quizzes and Kahoot, which it's often compared to, is quizzes allows the students to advance at their own pace. As quickly as they can answer these questions, it will let them move on and answer more questions. Now that the student, the only student in this case, has finished the quiz, look what the teacher sees. And you may decide not to show this information through the projector onto a screen or a smart board. You know, this is probably too personal to have the student's scores just shown up there on the screen, unless they use nicknames that their fellow students don't know. So you may want this not to be public, but rather to just be on the teacher computer or tablet. But look at this great information that the teacher gets. They get a final score for the student, and they get questions right and wrong. What the student's strengths and weaknesses are become pretty evident just by looking at these results. You can also export the results. You can review the questions. There's also more full reports that you can get on each activity that you conduct with students. So that should give you a good glimpse of what the experience is like, both for the teacher and also for the students. Now let's look at what it takes to create your own quizzes, game, or activity. 
Step one, of course, is to sign up for an account. So if you don't have an account already, you would go to quizzes.com, click login. You'll need to click this sign up button and then fill in the information to get signed up. Once you've registered and you're signed into your account, it takes you to a screen that looks kind of like this. And notice that you can see some quizzes that have recently been created by other teachers. Okay, and I can browse down the page to see those titles. If I put my mouse on the quiz name, it gives me some of the questions from that quiz here at the right. You can also search for quizzes that other people have created, and it should give you at least a few results. If you find a quiz that you're interested in, you can actually click on it, and you can play other teachers' quizzes. And in many cases, you're allowed to duplicate the quiz. It then adds it into your quizzes account. And so it's a great way to, with very little work, get a collection of quizzes that you may be able to use with your students. So even if you don't want to spend the time to make your own quizzes, you can go in and search for other teachers' quizzes and use those with your students and really get a lot of benefit from the website just by doing that. Let's look, though, at how to create your own custom quizzes. You can see this button here that says Create Your Own Quiz. You can also click here at the top where it says Create. Either way, it'll take you to this screen here where you can name your quizzes activity. So I'll just name it Classroom Vocabulary in this case. You choose the language and then decide if it's going to be a public quiz or a private quiz. Click Done. Now I can start manually creating questions for my students to answer. Okay, so question number one. To create this question, all I have to do is click there and type my question. And in this case, I want it to be focused on an image. So my question is going to be something like, what is this? And of course, I could put that in Spanish. That might be better. But I'll just type in, what is this? And then I'll click Add Image. And I can either click and drag an image into this box or click to upload it, or I could upload the image from a URL. In this case, I already have the image on my computer. So I'm going to click to upload that image. I'll go into my downloads and there is the photo I want to use. I just select it and it uploads it in. I double clicked on it actually and it loaded in that image. Next I put in some possible answers. So I can put in some that are correct, some that are incorrect, and then I just need to mark which one is correct. And this is the right answer. And over here on the right side, we get a preview of what the students are going to see when this question comes up in the activity. Notice that you have the option here to change the time limit for the students. Do you want them to have 30 seconds to answer this question or longer? There's lots of options here for the time that they get to answer the question. There's also some options here for fonts and for mathematical symbols. But in this case, I'm done with this question and I'm ready to move on to question number two. So I would create my next question by clicking here, new question, and just repeat that process and create a second question for my students to answer. So I've added a second question and you would just continue to add question after question until your quiz is finished. When you're done, click finish in the upper right and you do need to mark what the grade level is for this quiz. Okay, and you can see you can put in a range of grade levels and put in the subjects that your activity is meant for. In this case, world languages. You can also put in the specific topic and then just click finish and create quiz. This happens to be a pretty short quiz, but that's okay. So now, let's say a week from now or a month from now when I want to use this with my students, all I have to do is go to quizzes.com, sign into my account, and then go to My Quizzes here in the upper left. Here's the quiz that someone else created that I just copied, and here's my quiz. To use this with my students, all I do is click on it, and then I make a choice. Do I want my students to play this activity live, or do I want them to do it as homework? We'll look briefly at both, but let's look first at how you can use this live with your students as an in-class activity. Just click Play Live. Notice that there are some settings that you can choose. Do you want to mix up the questions so they're in different order for different students? You can turn that on or off. You can also mix up the answers. This way you won't accidentally always have the right answer be you know, A or C or whatever it might be. So you can turn that on or off. You can make it so the students see what the right answers are after each question, or you can turn that off. And you have the option of either showing or not showing all of the questions once the game is over. Now there's also some other settings. You can have a leaderboard, question timer, memes, and music, and you can turn those off if you don't want them. Once you're ready to play though, just click proceed. The address that the students all need to go to on their devices shows up in the upper left corner, and your activity code shows up in the upper right. 
So you have the students take out their cell phones, if you dare, or you could use iPads or take the students to the computer lab, but any technology that they have access to that has a web browser, they just take it out and they go to join.quizzes.com, they put in the class code, tap proceed, and then they have to tap to put in their name and then tap join game. Now a couple of things that you need to know as the teacher. As you watch your students sign into your activity, it's possible that a rogue student or two might put in a nickname that's inappropriate or that's inaccurate or might be you know, embarrassing or might be a problem. All you have to do if that happens is put your mouse on that person's name and notice that it gives you the ability to X out of that name and it'll disappear. Now as I said before, this screen here is really meant for you as the teacher. I actually would not recommend that you put this up on the screen at the front of the room because again that might encourage students to put in something inappropriate. But if this is only for you to see, if there is something inappropriate, it's not a big deal. You can just click to X out of it and force the student to sign in with a better name. Once all of your students are signed in, just click Start Game. You get a countdown and the activity begins. The students get question number one and they can answer at their own pace as quickly as they want to and as they can. Once they put in their answer, they get a number of points depending on if it was right or wrong answer and also how quickly they answered. They also can see a leaderboard of who's in first, who's in second, etc. And then they move on to the next question. When the quiz is over, the students get a message saying that it's over and the teacher has the ability now to look at all of the answers that were given by the students. I can click here to review the questions. Okay, so we could talk about this as a class even if I want to, or I could just look at them myself. I could export the results. When you click that, it gives you an Excel spreadsheet that you can open up to get a very detailed report of how each student did on your quizzes game. So that's a great feature to be able to do that. You should check out this My Reports section of quizzes as it gives you lots of control over the information that you can see. You can look at it based on the questions or based on the players and there's so much more that you should explore on your own about these reports. Now if you remember there was one other option that I had when I started this game with my students. If you recall I clicked on classroom vocabulary and I chose play live. But what if you teach online? You don't have an in-person class that you could play this game live with. Or let's say you want to give this as a homework assignment to the students. In those cases you would not use play live. Instead you would click homework, put in a due date for this quizzes activity. I could say it's going to be due on March 18th by 5.30 p.m. I still have a lot of the same options that I saw before and I can still change those. And then when I'm ready to assign this out to my students, I click proceed. The assignment is live. And again, just like before, students need to go to join.quizzes.com. Here's the game code that they need to use, but they don't have to all do it at the same time. And this is a great feature that Quizzes gives to teachers to do some formative evaluation, but do it as homework so that the students don't all have to be there live and physically present as you do the assessment. You can see there's some more instructions down here that you can look at and you could even print this out for your students. So quizzes is a really great way to do some formative assessment with your students and to do it in a way that they'll enjoy and that you as the teacher will probably enjoy. And even though it's fun, it still is very effective and can be very educational as well. It's a great way to review for a test or a quiz, but especially it's valuable for the teacher as a way to get formative assessment information on how well the students are learning and where their strengths and weaknesses are. So I hope you'll enjoy using quizzes. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more technology for teachers and students.